uh, to do today is to uh, show you what we are working on and several consider considerations about the ecosystem that uh, could be interesting for for, uh, for for the audience. So the first part of the uh, of the of the keynote is just uh, basic considerations, and the second is uh, um, a couple of things we are working on for our next iteration that also could be could be interesting. So uh, first, well, as you may know. Uh, the LRT finance um, ecosystem is uh, kind of huge, about uh, more than $9 billion uh, on TBL. And what's happening is, is uh, many tokens are, they just launched uh, their uh, initial airdrops, and some of them are uh, losing steam, some are they're not. And uh, there come changes. So uh, probably the market will reset on, on the following weeks and months, and maybe we, we need to rethink about the, what to think for the next iteration. So uh, first, there are some ideas that work uh, exploring to make the LRT uh, FI ecosystem more efficient. The first one is uh, create uh, an efficient and based economy. So uh, basically, when we think about ABS, it's about the active validated services, there are software as a service. And basically, uh, their uh, security is based on volume and time. So ABS is you construe their incentive models based on a team-based framework, and from granularity. So uh, this is about um, time and value efficient economy. So uh, the more granular uh, the points and the incentives of these ABSs are calculated, the better for everyone. We can uh, put the liquidity when it's more needed every time. Uh, we are working on this uh, closely with other protocols. Um, but probably we are going to create an oracle on the following months to uh, to try to um, harmonize different ABSs within the same time time structure. Basically, an, another point interesting is what we call uh, the max caps for ABSs. Uh, as, as you may know, the same uh, the same Ethereum can validate different uh, AB, different ABSs, but uh, it, it happens that if um, it, it, it happens that uh, a, a bit of, a, a bit of efficiency on the market could be uh, really really in, really interesting because if uh, an ABS captures like a lot a lot of uh, of liquidity, the problem is that uh, their incentives will be diluted over time. So maybe uh, every ABS should ask for a, a max cap, a maximum capacity, to make the incentives not diluted over the ecosystem. This is something also we are we are um, working on, because I think that, that many of these ABSs will probably launch inflationary tokens, and if their incentives are diluted on, on the launch, uh, this could lead to a more inflation over time. So this is a pretty pretty a pretty pretty, pretty important thing. Also, uh, we are we are working on another um, on, on another model of LRTs. Uh, as for now, LRTs are pretty monolithic. But uh, what about uh, if we could create custom and disposable LRTs? As for now, uh, you can choose between maybe 12 different uh, LRTs. They're basically the same as for now, or very, very similar with uh, small differences. But uh, that will change over time. As soon as the ABS is started to deploy incentives, uh, we will have LRTs uh, being very different uh, products in terms of risk and reward. But at the same time, they will continue to be more monolithic. Uh, and maybe you only uh, need these uh, liquid restaking tokens to be active for uh, days, seconds, or, or a, a fraction of time. So uh, what could be interesting is to create this uh, custom and disposable uh, alertis that, by example, think you're a Uniswap user, and Uniswap make use of uh, different ABSs, maybe six for, what about an LRT that only validate these six LRTs. Every time you use Uniswap, you 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 will have you will be receiving incentives, uh, driven by these LRTs. So it it will make sense. On our next iteration, we will be working on, on something like this uh, to make users create their own LRTs and also protocols to support different LRTs. So think about um, think about that. Well, this is the first part. Also. Uh, we are working on, on different parts. Uh, there are two important parts of, of what is an LRT, the, the risk and the reward. Um, uh, both things, I think, are pretty nascent. I think uh, uh, 
it, 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 it will be really interesting to uh, manage the risk on, on a better way and also manage the yields on a, be on a better way. So le let me just explain a little bit what we are doing. Uh, we are creating a risk management uh, framework where, uh, well, we, we find three pain points on LRTs. One are the slashing events uh, related to, uh, to ABSs. Also, the contract failures that ha that ha happen at any time of the of the protocols, and also another important thing that is uh, the uh, liquid risk taking token hypothecation and rehypothecation. That is, uh, the, it already caused at the peg um, about one one month ago, but it's a very important thing. So, how we can manage risk? Uh, basically, what we can start to doing is to uh, do what we call uh, ABS scoring. Uh, ABS are maybe extremely difficult to create technical due diligence over them because they are pretty different and, and, and not pretty easy to understand. So uh, maybe uh, the, the, the best way to, uh, to, to score an ABS will be see what liquidity is inside of, of the ABSs and what partners are supporting them. Normally, uh, big, big partners like uh, um, uh, fans and so, normally they will have a strong due diligence. So maybe uh, users and DJs will do a pretty more DGN approach with more risk. So what if we start to see what operators, what operators are behind um, ABSs on the institutional side and on the DGN side and, and try to just put uh, a score on top of that. that. That will make very easy for users to understand if it's a risky uh, ABS or, if, uh, or it's a more institutional grade uh, product. Uh, we are finishing it, it will be possible, it will be done in a couple of, uh, maybe one month, two months. Uh, this is pretty easy to do. And also, we are going directly into what we call LRT scoring. Uh, basically, as you may know, LRTs can be used as collateral, and uh, it happens that some people just use uh, um, leverious loops and repoticate one time after time these LRTs. Okay, that, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I respect people who do it, and it's, it's okay. Everybody has uh, different appetites for risk, and that's cool. But the problem is that with these loops, we can um, trigger and make it bigger, uh, big uh, volume events that can uh, make these uh, assets to the peg from Ethereum that could lead to a very uh, dangerous situation. It has already happened. So what, what we are uh, doing here is to go into all the ecosystem and try to see uh, what percentage of the uh, TBL is used as collateral on different protocols, on Aave, Prisma, Gearbox, different, and how much liquidity are on DEXs. Uh, with these two KPIs, we can see how uh, overheated that LRT is and what's the possibility of uh, the protocol to default generating bad debt. This is, this is very, very, very important. This is one of the biggest risks on this, on this cycle and something we, we, it's already on our platform. It will be complete on the on, on the next weeks, and uh, it it could give um, a great indicator of if the um, asset is overheated or it's uh, um, or it's uh, or, or it's cool. So you, you see that uh, there is more as collateral than liquidity. Probably in um, the big event, uh, there will be bad debt. So probably maybe you you should move your liquidity to another. LRT that is more uh, healthy. And th that's what, what we are trying. With our platform right now, with uh, AutoLayer right now, you can move your, you can move your assets, in, you can move uh, your funds between different LRTs in just two, three clicks. And uh, with this layer of information, you can see here, well, uh, the liquidity versus the, uh, versus the risk. So you can uh, just take uh, informed decisions about what to do with your money, basically. Also, there is another uh, problem with, with LRTs, as you may know. As for now, ABSs are not deployed in yield. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty important for them to do it, but it will take time. So, uh, as for now, many airdrops are finishing, and so, and so, and, and this, this cycle and all the ecosystem will, uh, will really flourish if ABSs are able to, 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 to deliver incentives to the users, no? What we can do on this time, because it could take maybe, I don't know, six time to two years to, to see ABS is, uh, being really, really uh, function as well. So basically what we are uh, trying to create is what we call liquidity proxy tokens. 
that uh, basically, well, uh, I, 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 I don't want to go really, really deep into that, but uh, basically these uh, liquidity proxy tokens are buying time for ABS. So basically this is a reward token, very inflationary, that uh, as for the moment, uh, when, when, you, when you buy it, you, bar, you put uh, assets on a vault, uh, that vault will gather uh, incentives from ABSs that at the beginning will be a liquid, and uh, so these tokens will have a uh, huge inflation over time, but as the moment they will have a basket of ABSs inside, on the moment these ABSs uh, will start to gather real or liquid incentives, we will automatically uh, sell those liquid incentives and, and buy and burn the assets. So basically, works like a wine factory. Uh, you, you let this uh, have uh, to be here for a time, and on the time this ABS is inside start to generate uh, gen generate yield, uh, the price of the asset will go out over time, like a wine. You, you let it, you harvest, uh, you let it three years, and later you sell it. And this is something that could gain time for the ABSs to gain momentum and to be able to be uh, to generate incentives over time. Also, we are working. Uh, I love structured products. Also, we are looking. We are working on on different structured products. Uh, basically, the first one we are going to launch are related to Arbitrum and BNB chain. Um, basically, uh, this is a small leverage product that that will. This is the first structured product we are going to launch. It's about buying an LRT, using it as collateral on, on a money market, uh, and later on buy some Arbitrum and put it to uh, to generate yield on the staking program Arbitrum is going to launch very soon. So by this, we are gen generating various layers of steady compound, in the compound interest. This is very important. Compound interest may be the most important force when it comes to, to, to generate income, no? to generate yield. And uh, with this, we can create various layers of, of um, compounding interest and a product that will repay its own debt over time. Uh, when it comes to structured products, I, I don't like to go to very um, esoteric formulas. This is a pretty simple one. You know, structured products work badly on um, when there are volume events or when the market moves very, very fast. But uh, on the formulations we are we are we're working on, that doesn't happen. They are pretty pretty steady, pretty uh, easy to to understand, and nothing really uh, nothing really esoteric. So. Uh, also working on multi LRTs, as you know, uh, Eigenlayu is not the only one uh, ecosystem that uh, um, that are over staking. So we can build uh, staking products that try to generate yield on top of uh, um, LRTs and going into symbiotic Karak or Nectar architectures that are also pretty, pretty fine. So we can also generate uh, like uh, maybe 10, 12 layers of different, uh, of different interests and generate again a great, a great opportunity to generate component interest. And uh, we are working on another products that we call LRT vaults that are something similar to that with, with, a more, auto with more automations, ba basically, uh, with these LRT balls, we will basically rotate the, capo the capital between different ABSs looking for the best yield and uh, uh, to try to, with small repotication, just to try to uh, go to the uh, correct ABS on the, on the moment it's generating more yield. And this is basically what, you, what we are doing. I, I hope you like it. And if you have any question, uh, I will be happy to, to, to reply.